Here's a fun fact, your Minecraft world is constantly trying to kill you, but not in the ways you think. Your biggest threat isn't the zombie skeletons and creepers that come out at night. It's not even drowning or burning alive. It's not exploding, crashing, getting shot, freezing, poison, or starvation, no. The biggest threat to your existence in this blocky sandbox game is the world itself. Let me explain. It's well known that a block in Minecraft is a cubic meter. The world, 60 million by 60 million blocks, making the surface area of a Minecraft world 3.6 billion kilometers squared, seven times larger than the surface of Earth. Using the area, we can find the radius and volume of a theoretical Minecraft planet. Crafty master man. Minecraft can't be a sphere, it's made of cool. It's a sphere. Always has been. Cry about it. Using this equation, we can find the radius of our planet at 16,925.68 kilometers, and the volume as 20 sextillion 300 quintillion meters. Cube. And the only word any of you guys understood in that sentence was 20. So here's how big that number is. The Earth is only a measly one sextillion meters cubed. God, only one. This makes our planet Minecraft 18.7 times bigger than the Earth in volume. We assume the density of a dry rocky Minecraft world was 6,750 kilograms per meter cubed. A little more than the water covered Earth's 5,510 kilograms per meter cubed. We can find the mass of an average Minecraft world to be about 137 septillion kilograms, which is coincidentally almost the exact same mass as Neptune. But crafty, I can't to know the deadliest thing in Minecraft. Shut up. We're about to figure that out. Now that we know the size and mass of planet Minecraft, we can use this equation to find its gravity. Force of gravity that will be acting constantly on the player. So substituting the radius and mass of the world, gravity comes out to be, wait, what? What is this big G thingy looking thing here? Why is there a big G? Hello viewers, let me introduce you to Newton's law of universal gravitation. This law tracks every other point of mass proportionally to the square, square distance between them. Okay, but no one cares. Big G is basically a number that explains gravity with proportion to mass and volume, and it equals this number, which is very, very small. Plugging all this in, we get our acceleration of gravity at 31.4232 meters per second squared, which is three times Earth's gravity, which should kill you by sheer pressure, but, you know, let's assume that you somehow survive being compressed by celestial forces. 3Gs of force is about what you feel when you're upside down in a loop-de-loop. -loop. And you're feeling that all the time. But we got these numbers by using fancy equations, wacky numbers, and our boy Big G. But can we replicate this acceleration value with in-game testing? Um... Well, now I wish I could say my testing went smoothly. It didn't. Long story short, after dozens of drops of sand, items, players, logs, and arrows, the highest acceleration I was able to get was 16.12 meters per second squared. Which, um, is not 31. Minecraft also has air resistance, which means terminal velocity and graphs and inconsistencies, and there's no way to make a vacuum in Minecraft, making this technically impossible to calculate accurately only one of the- this is NBD, Certified Minecraft Nerd and Pearl Cannon Expert, so she knows a fair bit about entity movement. So I asked her everything she knew, and oh my god. There are two ways Minecraft calculates gravity, known as case G and case D. And this equation happens every single game tick, or 0.05 seconds. So what the heck is this, and how does it work? Three variables are VN, G, and DV, which are the entity's velocity at the current game tick, gravity, and vertical drag. Basically, the velocity in the next game tick equals the velocity of the current game tick, plus all this random wacky. Math. For this video, we'll be using the gravity constant for players, which is 0.08 blocks per game tick per game tick, which is 32 meters per second squared. So it actually matches our math pretty well. So this is pretty epic and amazing. Oh, wait. Redstone exists. Right, let's get to the point. Pistons are the most dangerous blocks in Minecraft. If you got pushed by one, you'd probably turn into redstone dust yourself. By the way, did you know redstone is radioactive? Pistons can push 12 blocks a block away in 0.15 seconds at 6.66 meters per second, with the piston head accelerating at 88.88 meters per second squared. But crafty, what about zero tech? So we know how fast the piston can move, but how much can it lift? There are over 500 blocks a piston can push, so which one is the heaviest? For years, it's been the gold block, weighing in at 19,300 kilograms, which definitely makes it a good contender. However, the netherite block is more than four times heavier, needing 36 gold ingots versus nine. But what about the other half of the recipe? You can't really make netherite without ancient debris. So what's our real life equivalent? Well, here's what we know. Ancient debris is harder than diamonds and canonically does not exist in its purest form in the nether. It's a reddish gray in color and crafty literally who cares? Well, let's start with point one. On earth, there is literally nothing natural that is harder than diamonds. So how is netherite even possible? Well, diamonds are 
nothing but a chunk of carbon being squished and heated for a long time. So it isn't a stretch to assume that debris was carbon that was squished and heated for a longer time given the environment of the nether. This also explains the gray color with chunks of netherrack mixing in, giving it that reddish tint. So let's assume that ancient debris is some kind of super diamond and give it a density of 3,530 kilograms per meter cube. And since one debris smelts into one scrap, each one will weigh 3,530 kilograms. Yeah, okay, maybe a lot of it is lost while being mined and smelted, but you know, sh sh so with 36 scrap plus four gold blocks, one block of netherite has a mass of 204,280 kilograms, which is just over the Statue of Liberty, over 5,000 penguins, and 3,647 crafty mastermen. Now I'll multiply that by 12. So how much force does a piston need to be able to push over 2 million kilograms? Well, the equation for force is actually pretty simple. Just multiply mass and acceleration. In this case, the gravity we found from earlier. Meaning the stack of 12 netherite alone exerts a force of 78,443,520 newtons on the piston. This also means the piston needs to exert the same 78 million newtons upwards just to keep itself in one piece. So to move the stack, you would need to output a force upwards that is more than double that. So can our piston do it? Well, yeah. Yeah, it obviously does that in the game. For a piston to accelerate 12 netherite blocks at 88.88 meters per second squared, you need to push with a force of over 217 million newtons and use an explosive 217 million joules of energy. The same as 52 kilograms of TNT or over 200 lightning strikes. But Crafty, how much power does Whetstone need to power the piston? That it's actually a good question. Okay, so what is power? Power is defined as the social product of an effect that determines the capacity. I think this is the wrong power. In our case, power means energy transferred or converted over time, and its units are the watt, which is equal to one joule per second. And to find power, we just need to divide work by time. So one easy peasy division later, and we get over 1.4 gigawatts, or over a billion watts of power. Now, this is a very large number that doesn't really make sense, so let's use a better measurement. Houses. Power used in houses uses a different unit known as kilowatt hour. It's basically a way to know how much power something uses over a certain time frame. So converting to that gives us 60 kilowatt hours, meaning every time you power a piston, you are using the same power that two houses use per day in a blink. This two by two, eight daily houses. This three by three, 26 houses. This three by three, the entire planet. This begs the question, what the heck is redstone? Seriously, what is this red radioactive substance that can power something like this? Everything in this video has has come to now. Minecraft's insane triple gravity, listens with impossibly high energy usage, but everyone knows these things already. No one talks about the biggest threat that Minecraft actually poses, redstone itself. We know three things about this stuff. It's red, radioactive, and really powerful. In the education edition, there's a block known as the material reducer. Placing certain items in the top slot will reduce it to the elements in the periodic table. But there are some items that have this mystery element known as... The, the unknown element. Probably because Mojang aren't chemists and have no idea what their blocks are actually made of. According to this block, redstone is made from carbon, uranium, and an unknown element. And here we run into our first problem. None of these are red. This third mystery element has to turn this dark gray uranium carbide into red, which actually might be possible. In real life, when metals get oxidized, they can change color drastically, two of the most well-known being iron and copper oxide, which people know as just, well, rust. When uranium becomes oxidized, it goes from a dark gray to a bright yellow, which isn't exactly red, but it's the closest we can get. So, radioactive red energy powder. How dead are you right now? Well, according to the CDC, external exposure to uranium, like being near it, isn't as dangerous since the alpha particles it shoots out can't penetrate your skin. Oh, but it's still a toxic heavy metal. If you inhale the redstone like a stoner's do, you get the double whammy of radiation and poison. Now, also remember, this stuff can output 1.4 gigawatts at signal strength 1. Now, just imagine trying to build a piston going survival. You spawn in the world. You feel three times your weight nauseous being crushed seemingly from the air itself. After hours of turmoil, you finally find your first ura redstone ore. Of course, you don't know its radioactive nature, so you swing your iron pickaxe reckless. Dust and fumes flying everywhere. You're definitely irradiated now. You're kind of dead. But you got enough resources to craft four sticky pistons and build your first 2x2 door. Unfortunately, you didn't know what you were getting into because, well, your Minecraft world is constantly trying to kill you.